Hello and welcome to the RS200 packing tips video. We're going to start with the mast. We've got the mast down and disconnected from the boat. So first thing to sort through is the shrouds and forestay. Now on our forestay we've got a rope end and we simply pass this round the base of the mast step where we've got a small groove sort of cut into the mast step for the forestay to sit in. Then we pass the rope end of the forestay through the two eyes in the shroud to so tighten that back up. Then we're going back through the forestay eye and up to the shrouds once more to make sure it's all nice and tight. And this way we're preventing any of these shrouds from rubbing on the mast. Next up to sort is the halyards. Um, we simply connect our halyards to the halyard ring the main halyard with a simple bobble knot while the spinnaker halyard we just tie a bowlin in our short tail. Once these are connected to the halyard ring we then pull them tight so the spinnaker halyard needs to be pulled tight and then a stopper knot placed where it exits the mast to prevent it coming loose. Um, the main halyard is simpler where you can just pull it tight and cleat it in the halyard cleat. If however you do not have a halyard ring on the mast what you can do is pull the halyards all the way to the top so that are sitting on the mast again spin a halyard will need a stopper knot where the other halyard such as the main halyard we can just pull all the way to the top and again that will sit in its cleat. The harder one to do is the jib halyard again we pull this all the way to the top so it sits in its exit and then because it's wire coming out of the mast we'll just need to pass it round the base of the mast and then I would simply tie it around the just above the gooseneck sort of with two half hitches just to prevent it from coming loose With all the halyards tidied away we can just coil them all up uh, and put them on the mast and then we like to put a mast bag over the top because this stops us having to waste any electrical tape and just really neat and quite simple really. Um, so we slide it over the bottom putting all the halyards in and then we just got to pull it over the halyard ring and then gooseneck. This particular halyard bag is quite long, it doesn't need to be that long. They can be just below the halyard ring, for example, um, and then we just tie them up to the halyard ring to prevent them from falling down. This just makes it really simple, it actually makes the boat very neat as well. The next item to look at securing is the boom. Now, we like to leave everything on the boom connected, so the kicker and main sheet, so we just use bit of carpet at the front and a small cushion in the middle on the fort for the boom to sit on. Now what I've been able to find is the best thing to do is actually use the downhaul to go around the end of the boom. So this stops needing to use another strap and then just by pulling that tight making sure the downhaul block isn't sitting on the boom. With the carpet underneath the boom, the boom is now secure at the front just make sure that carpet is underneath the outhaul cleat to prevent any damage. Then in the middle with the cushion supporting the boom we then pass a strap once around the fort and boom and just tighten that up and as you can see that's nice and tight. Next up we've got the sails. I like to put the main sail in first. I put this on the opposite side to the boom to make sure it's not getting squished from that and then under the fort over the control lines and then at the front I like to tie them on with a clove hitch on the line between the two jib cleats. This just prevents that awkward situation of turning up to a, a event and your cells have all fallen out of the back because if you've tied them on they're not going to move anywhere. Then we follow this same procedure with both the jib and spinnaker. I always like to put the spinnaker right up the front again it just lessens the chance of it falling out of the back. We can now move on to 
putting the rudder in. I like to put the rudder in the boat because it just frees up space in the car. And this is very simply just put underneath the helm's toe strap and you can put a tiny bit of carpet under the front of the tiller if you want. And that's just simply secure like so. The final thing to go in a boat is covers, but this could also be sailing kit. And I like to just put this over top of the rudder and underneath the boom, keeping it nice and secure. Next up, we've got the fun task of putting the undercover on. Make sure you get the front and the back the right way around. Otherwise, that can be a bit embarrassing. Done that a few times myself. With the cradle trolley that we've got, we like to start at bow, lifting the boat up so we can get the cover on beyond the first support. We can then place the boat back down and then with one person each side we both grab the back corner of the cover, lift up the boat with one arm and pull the cover towards the back. And We find this is a really simple way of doing it. It doesn't require too much effort. With the cover pulled up and round we can put the tightening straps on. There's three of these on this cover. Um, we just do a simple purchase system to make sure they're nice and tight and at the front we just pass them between the two eyes all of these is just tied off with simple half hitches we then place our jib sheets and spinnaker sheets into the halyard bag that way we know when we turn up to the next event, they'll be there and we know where they are rather than how to look through sails. Next up, we've got a top cover. This is a trailing top cover with no hole for the mast. So it helps to prevent the cover from bellowing out and causing damage. Just simply roll this round, attach the straps. The next key thing to do is to tie the boat down to the trailer. This just means that the trailer and boat aren't going to come separated at any point and makes it easy to put the boat up onto the rope. We're now ready to put the boat up on top of the road base. So you want to line them up. Makes it a bit easier if you put your road base on your car just to stop it from moving anywhere. Now pull a boat forward and then at this point it's best to get someone at the back so you don't damage the transom by lifting it at the back it makes it easy for the person at the front just to pull the boat forward and down onto the locating pin. Next job is to tie the boat to the road base. This just prevents the boat from going anywhere from the road base and it won't end up with a boat dragging around. With the boat secure we can do the final front end of the top cover just doing up the clip and then the bottom ribbon I like to make sure this bottom ribbon is really tight because this just helps to prevent any air getting up into the cover from and that would cause more damage at the back where you get that big bellow and the cover going up and down against the boom Moving to the back of the boat, we can put the lighting board on. We've got a very simple set system where we just slide it into the gudgeons and then we can chuck the cable forward. We're all ready for the mast to come onto the boat. Right, so we can now get the mast onto the trailer. I like to put the halyards up at the top end so even if they did come out of bag, they wouldn't end up dragging along the roads. One thing I like to do as well is make sure all the halyards except the main halyard and forestay are on the outside of the support. This prevents any rubbing and ensures no anodizing will be rubbed off and then simply pass a elastic rope round the mast a few times and through the front. Have a very similar setup to the front at the back. 
Again, more elastic, just going around the mast once, holds it in the middle, preventing it from hitting the support. Uh, just nice and simple. Now with the s strap for the boat, we like to put it as far back on the road base as we can. This prevents the strap from trying to push the boat out the back because the strap is not at the widest part of the boat. It's always going to want to push the boat off the back of the trailer, which would not be ideal. This can be nice and tight and we also put some carpet around the gunnel edges to prevent any damage from occurring. The final step for us is on our light board we've got two rope supports to pull that forward and we also use it to pull the strap backwards. So this helps by keeping the strap as far back on the boat and keeps the lighting board up away from the road as I've seen a few people driving down with the lighting board hitting the road. Thank you very much for watching and if you've got any tips or other questions please hit us up and we'll do our best to answer them. Cheers.